What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Kill Switch Engage record, Incarnate, out last Friday, March 11th. 11 days late now, but that is why you don't drink, do drugs, or hang out with women in any capacity, because shit just does not get done. But my blog review of Incarnate has been up, so if you just want to see my thoughts in word form, I'll link that in the description. So bear with me for this comparison. But I feel like with Incarnate, Killswitch's seventh album now, they face a very similar challenge that Anthrax faced last month with For All Kings, in that you have this triumphant return of an original singer that yields a studio album that far and away exceeds most people's expectations, but now you've set a pretty high bar for a follow-up. When Anthrax brought back Joey Belladonna and put out worship music in 2011 to resounding acclaim, once that becomes old news, it's like, how the fuck do you follow that up? Fortunately for Anthrax, by all accounts, certainly by my account, they succeeded. So for Killswitch Engage, when they reunited with original singer Jesse Leach, 2013's Disarm the Descent was their worship music, if you catch my drift. It was an excellent, profoundly inspired album that had even some fans, mostly probably a younger generation, claiming that maybe it had even topped Alive or Just Breathing or End of Heartache. So with Incarnate, they have the incredibly difficult task of following up this return of an original singer. But for my money, they really succeed. They've gone back to back, if you will. Now before the band streamed over half of Incarnate ahead of its release in true, true 2016 fashion, there were two initial singles, Strength of the Mind and Hate by Design, both quintessential Killswitch Engage. Delicate balances between rage and beauty. Riff-wise, Strength of the Mind is pure Pantera with kind of a uplifting Jesse Leach chorus slapped on top, while Hate by Design takes this impassioned stance against racism and prejudice and discrimination, urging listeners to redefine your life. I really dug both tracks, and fortunately, on Incarnate, they're surrounded by a remarkably consistent track listing. Alone I Stand, the opener, easily one of the strongest tracks on here, allowing the album to really not waste any time establishing itself. Cut Me Loose, the third track, that's a really interesting song because the transition between the kind of down-tempo verses and this huge uplifting chorus is like such an abrupt mood swing, but the melody in the chorus is just so beautiful and so powerful that it really works. You don't mind it, you really hardly notice it after a few listens. Embrace the Journey, Up Raise is another highlight. It's this impeccable balance of heavy and melodic, which really is, when they're firing on all cylinders, really kills which is best asset. It's become a dirty word now, the whole heaven and hell, good cop, bad cop kind of metalcore vocals, but people forget that Killswitch really pioneered this, and they're still the band that arguably does it the best. But of course, in addition to that balance, we have probably the best guitar riff on the album on Embrace the Journey Up Raise. We have that chunky opening bass riff, and then we have the band really embracing their roots by breaking it down hard at the end of this track. Then from track 7 to 10, you actually get four in a row that give this album more muscle as you progress deeper into the track listing. Great Deceit, Quiet Distress, both rippers with a heavy, heavy thrash influence, although Quiet Distress has a little bit more of that kill switch melody. The Great Deceit, though, has easily my favorite chorus on the whole album. It's so dark, it's so powerful, and musically the song just goes for the jugular. On Until the Day, I especially enjoyed that Colony Era in Flames influence chorus. And then there's It Falls on Me, which is a sludgy tune that kind of changes up the pace of the album a bit. I'll bite for one song. It's pretty consistent pace on this album, aside from It Falls on Me, but this track easily has my favorite musical moment on all 12 tracks. It's, I guess you could call it the instrumental bridge at about 2 minutes and 15 seconds. It's this chord progression that captures the melodrama and the despair of that song just perfectly, kind of in the same way that the Times of Grace song, Fall From Grace, does. It's just desolate. In the end, the only less than remarkable moments are the last pair of tracks, We Carry On and Ascension, which they're really just somewhat forgettable. But by that point in the LP, you've been hit with 10 really solid, really high quality Killswitch songs that it's kind of forgivable at that point. 
As really is expected by now, the production on Incarnate does nothing to stray from Adam D's winning, accessible modern metal formula. It's pristine without being glossy. It's definitely still a heavy sounding record. It honestly sounds a lot like Disarm the Descent. Although this time around, at least to my ears, there's a real abundance of double bass drums. So it's a huge asset to Incarnate that those double bass drums sit perfectly comfortable in the mix. But in my book, the most important thing we have to discuss here is Jesse Leach. He brings that punk and hardcore sensibility to the band that was slightly, ever so slightly lacking in those Howard Jones years. Vocally, I'm going to argue that hit, this is his best performance to date in his studio. His cleans are perhaps the prettiest, for lack of a better word, the prettiest and most pristine they have sounded. And his harsh vocals and his screams are definitely the most aggressive and visceral they've ever sounded. And lyrically, he takes a great metalcore album and makes it exceptional simply by what he is saying. The lyrics on this album are thoughtful, articulate, and most importantly, they're incredibly moving. He spoke in the press about how Incarnate is essentially split in two when it comes to lyrics. You have the first half, which is hopeful and empowering, and then you have the second half, which is bleak and wrought with despair. You know, and like on the first half, you have a song like Strength of the Mind, which, I mean, the title speaks for itself. Personally, I really connected with Alone I Stand. It's about standing up for what you believe in, even when it means in solitude. It really felt like something that Jamie Joss would write. On the first half, you've also got tunes like Embrace the Journey Up Race, which, I mean, do I really need to break that down? Read the fucking title. But then on the second half, the album transitions into more somber topics, like It Falls on Me, which Jesse Leeds talked about in the press as writing at his lowest, when he was really at his lowest emotionally. On Until the Day, hearing him address the hardships of the touring lifestyle was also something that really connected with me and really resonated with me. Here's the thing about Jesse Leach. He is like the ultimate everyman when it comes to depression and mental illness. On Incarnate, you get the sense that he is seeking solace in his pen and paper in the same fashion that his fans are seeking solace in him. Excuse like the cheesy phrasing, but it's almost like this journey that the listener embarks on alongside him rather than him just simply saying, here's what I went through, figure it out. It really feels like you're there with him through the hardships and through the more positive, uplifting, stronger moments. The struggles feel current, they're authentic, and they're relatable. And I think Jesse Leach's ability to connect on such a deep level is the best thing about this album. So where do I think Incarnate sits in Killswitch Engage's discography? Well, since this isn't really much of a deviation from Disarm the Descent, only time will tell in terms of which record is superior. For my money right now, you could literally make an argument for both. That is how close it is. More broadly, while I think the first two Howard albums are excellent, I personally tend to find that the Leech stuff is a bit more inspired and has a bit more bite. So for me, the three Jesse Leach albums, if you exclude their self-titled debut, the three Jesse Leach albums comprise my top three Killswitch Engage albums, although those first two Howard albums, End of Heartache and Daylight Dies, are not too far behind. But congratulations to Killswitch Engage for meeting high expectations once again. Incarnate gets an 8 out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.